Hey, today we're going to learn how to do a scrolling platform and if you enjoy these kind of things, let me know by subbing to the channel. Today we're going to build a scrolling platformer. Now these seem very, very complicated. If you're brand new to Scratch, it is a little bit challenging, but I think it's a lot of fun. And once you get the basic idea, you can make some amazing little programs. For these platformers, actually, it's mostly about the platforms themselves. They're doing most of the moving, certainly in the X directory. And so we do need some variables and each variable should be local to that sprite. That means we can copy and paste the code very, very easily um, from one object to another because every object is going to need to move. And that's the real secret behind a scrolly uh, platformer is that actually it's the sprite. So we've got one, offset X, which is how far it is from the main one and the place that we're going to put into Y. Now the next one, we are going to make a variable for all sprites and this is the actual real X because what you'll find is that with the new Scratch 3, you can't track things that are off screen, so to speak. So we need to put in that. Right, and then next, we're going to put in our code for our dragon and we're going to set up a couple of things firstly real x is going to start at zero and this is going to be where we're going to go and then we're going to go back to the platforms and we're going to now we're going to set our offset x which is where is this platform going to appear now to begin with it's going to be a fairly simple one we're going to put it not too far and then we're also going to set the Y position. So this is where do we want it to actually go? Okay, and this is where you're going to start each platform off and each of these will be different. But because we've been using local sprites, you can copy and paste these to as many as you like and you can have different ones. So when we use our go to, Then we put our real X plus our offset X. This means we can always have a position based on the absolute position of real X. Now back over on the dragon side of things, we are going to put in a little bit of help here. And to make this a little bit easier on the computer, we're gonna put a forever loop. And as you can imagine, if we do the detection in every single platform, it's going to be very slow. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a broadcast and we're going to broadcast move. So every time we ask the dragon to move, all of the platforms will move. And to do that, we just have if. And I have been told on Reliable Framer that everybody prefers the Minecraft keys of AWSD. So we'll be using those. Uh, goodbye to the curses. But if you prefer curses, of course, you can change it by just changing this function. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to change real X. And this is probably going to feel a bit counterintuitive because we need to do it the opposite way. So if you look here, we're pressing A, which is to go left and everything's getting added to, which is the opposite of what would be happening because we're moving the platforms the opposite way. And then we're going to do the same, but minus 10. So this is because it's the platforms not moving, not the dragon. And then we're going to go across here and this is where we can use the broadcast. So now I'm saying when I receive the move command, I'm just going to update this. So I'm going to update this. So every time we move, 
you're going to see the platform moving back and forth. And this is what helps us to have this illusion of going back and forwards. At the moment, it's really obvious, but I assure you, when you start to play with this, it will make a lot more sense. Let's now add a second platform, and this is where the real power of this comes. We need to do very little work here now to do just do it. We have to just change the start position, the offset, and because they're local variables, they all take care of themselves. And so have a little go at this and have a check. And you can use the go to just to give you an idea of where you're looking here. Now it's probably a good idea to have real X around because then you can see as it gets bigger than the screen it carries on. And there we go, we've got this very nice scrolling thing. Now don't worry that all the things look like they're on the left and the right. I'm going to show you a cunning trick to deal with that very shortly. Now although our platforms here are moving the X, when it comes to the Y the dragon is actually going to move. Um, and he's also going to turn left and right as well. So for this one we're doing forever if and you're just going to see how we do this bit. And so it's always nice to have some gravity. So if you're not touching green, you're constantly going to fall. The eyedropper tool is super handy here to help us just create those color rules. So next we're gonna change Y by minus five just to really make sure that we're falling whenever that's happening. Now we'd like the W key to actually help us go up and jump. And so I've just duplicated that little bit here, taking out a few bits and pieces because it's quicker than dragging around. And we're now just going to add the key things in. So firstly, obviously the W key itself will be important. Next we're going to have a repeat. So you're going to repeat and you're going to go up by 7. And we're going to change Y by 10 because we've got to actually be more than that. Now if you want your character to fly you can just stop it there. But normally what we have to do is put in a little delay um, so that we don't have the ability to fly. So 0 0.3 seconds is normally enough to stop them. Next thing we're going to do is change the middle item so it looks like he's going left and right and then we're going to have 90 and minus 90 when we have a look. So we have 90 to go right and minus 90 to go left. And now you're going to see that our dragon now can go both ways. Got to make sure you put it the right way around though. <laughs> That's a key thing. Here we go. There you go. There he is. Drag him a little bit further to left and right. Now earlier I said don't worry about those items collecting on the left and right. It's, it's not going to be a big issue. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put in a nice blue background. So what we've done is we've made a nice blue background. We've uh, put that together and that looks good. But you can see those items clashing. So what we do is actually we kind of put a kind of a wall, a little barrier over the side. So that all those bits that are collecting aren't causing a problem. This is much more obvious uh, when we use the white background. So you just put that in and we can change the background very quickly just to see what's going on here. And we just put that over the top and then we duplicate it and we put that. Now it is important that you always keep these to the front, otherwise it can be a bit tricky. A couple of ways to do that. Um, you can either use the block 
or you can use the menu option. To make an actual game we're now going to add a danger color and this danger color will enable us to send him back to the beginning of the level if he touches red. So I've just added a little bit of red at the bottom and I'm now just going to do the touching color and we're going to do that. You also need to reset the real X back there as well and you may also need to broadcast that once that has happened otherwise it can be a little bit messy. So I'm just copying that and we're going to do the same. If you touch red If you touch red, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get sent back to the beginning. So you've got your absolute basics in there. You've got platforms that scroll a danger color. But I just want to emphasize that you don't have to do that for just anything. Just like the platforms, you can copy and paste anything. So in this case, we can have a dangerous item that also moves along and causes an obstruction for you. So you can make it a much more fun, jumpy game where you've got to avoid something. So in the beginning, I just put it over there. Now I'm just going to show up the, the real thing so you can see where you want to point it and then you can have a little bit of danger added on there. And just by adding these items on there, you can see exactly what's going on. A little bit of adjustment there just to find a good spot for that so that it causes that danger at the right point. Not quite sure that's where I wanted it for a beginning level. Seems a bit mean. There you go, in the middle there. But also we can have characters that you can interact with. So I'm just going to choose the uh, toad and I'm going to add the toad. A little bit of evidence here. It's not quite to scale, etc. Popping down about right. Dragon's going to be a bit bigger than a toad. Also, probably should flip him the other way because he's going to meet you to the left. So I'll figure that out. A little bit of organization there. And then what we're going to do is we are going to pop them in the right spot so that they can come in and have a go. And then finally, once they touch you, they're going to encourage you and say hello and meet you. So that's going to be something we can do kind of nicely there. So let's have a look. Okay, just need to fix that bit there. Make sure that he actually is doing as he's supposed to. Okay. Some of this is a little bit of experiment. Play with it a little bit until you get it just right. Get the character exactly where you want them. Obviously, try not to die. And then we go. And there we are. What's quite nice is because the broadcasts happen very frequently. We don't need to actually make a forever on this. We can just say, look, if, if I'm touching the person, let's say low for a few seconds and the job is done. And there you have your very basic scroller. But I hope you can imagine just how fun this game could become.